Hi guys, it's Debbie from What's Mama Cooking For Us. And today we're just making some beef and noodles. Delicious, easy meal. You can throw it together really quick. It's And if you want it to, you can add sour cream and turn it into beef stroganoff. But I'm just doing mine simple today and the way I like to have it. So what I have here is about a pound of any type of beef you like. This is a chuck roast, but you could use stew meat or any type of meat. Um, beef that you choose even ground beef. I got some about um, eight ounces of mushrooms one large onion um, Two cups of beef stock or vegetable stock or whichever stock you want to use some salt and pepper egg noodles. I love egg noodles some garlic and onion powder and a little bit of Worcestershire sauce and I'm gonna take some flour and butter and butter and mix it together to make our gravy. It's gonna be so good. So don't go away, guys. It's so simple and so easy. We don't even really need a recipe for it. Just add what you like and do it up how you like. And okay, you guys, so to make my gravy, I use equal parts of butter and equal parts of flour. And that's the rule on gravies and roux and whatever you wanna do. Use equal parts fat, equal parts flour, or equal parts cornstarch, or whichever thickener you're going to use. So I have three tablespoons of butter, and then I'm going to do three tablespoons of flour. And it's that simple, and I just like to do this up ahead of time. You can even keep this in the refrigerator, the freezer, wrap it up really good. Mine's a little hard yet, but it's going to soften. <laughs> while I'm making the dinner. Um, but yeah, and you can make these up in advance and make them into little pats or chunks and keep them right in the fridge and just throw them in your recipes. Makes your life easier, simple and easy. And I hope you guys give this a little trick a try. Okay, so I got my um, cast iron pan. It's enamel covered. And this pan is great, guys. So if you're looking for a great lifetime pan this is it this is made by lodge but they have other brands but the lodge brand is a little bit cheaper so give these a try i i cook everything in these and i can't live without it now we're just gonna put oh yeah you gotta open it first i forgot it was brand new <laughs> some olive oil oh my gosh i can't get it open oh oh and now i broke it perfect well, anyway, I keep some olive oil here in a spray bottle. <laughs> we'll just use that. <laughs> okay, when all things fail on your video. <laughs> okay, and so then I'm just going to put our meat in. And you want to hear that sizzle. And you don't want to touch it too much because we want to get some color. Caramelization is the correct word. And yeah, so, and then in this bowl here, you guys can see that I have a teaspoon of salt, almost a little over a half a teaspoon of pepper. So you go with a half, but I like a little bit more. A teaspoon of garlic powder and a teaspoon of onion powder. And like I said, I'm heavy on my pepper. So, but you guys use, you know, what you like. And you can use other seasonings as well. Oh my goodness. This is going to be so good, you guys. I can't wait to enjoy this. So just let that cook for a few minutes and then we'll be right back. Okay, I should have flipped the meat first because I don't want my spices to burn on the bottom there. So either put it on in a separate bowl I was trying to get this video done correctly, but you know, I always have to screw up somewhere. Just get it mixed up on your meat. So it doesn't actually burn. No big deal. Roll with the flow, go with the flow. I mean, roll with the punches. And you, that's what cooking's all about. Just make adjustments. Something's burning, turn it down a little. Something's not cooking, turn it up a little bit. You know, you just go with the flow of things. Okay, now we're starting to get some color. And guys, this is just a pound of meat, but if you want to go with a pound and a half, 
or if you have a bigger family this is just for a couple of days i i eat this for a couple of days so it's like for serving for four i'll have it today for dinner tomorrow for lunch and maybe the next day for dinner you know like that these these dishes freeze good too but yeah if you're cooking for your family you know six or you know you're going to need more meat and then more of everything so go ahead and double this up but even if you're just doing this for four and you want to add just a little bit more meat because this is just how i like mine okay just let that keep cooking until we get some more color all right now we're getting some color in there so now we're not cooking the beef until it's completely cooked we're just searing it to get color so we, we've accomplished that. So we're gonna take that out. Sorry guys. And the lighting in my kitchen's terrible. My new kitchen, there's no lighting over the stove. And uh, so I'm gonna have to get a, a, a light for over the stove. All right, now we're gonna let this pan come back up to temperature. You see that? Look at that, guys, delicious. And let's throw in our mushrooms. And we'll develop some more color and more flavor. Let those go for a minute. We'll add the onions. Okay, yeah, so we just wanted to develop some color on those mushrooms. Let's add in our onions. And guys, if you don't like onions, leave them out. If you don't like mushrooms, leave them out. And you can add garlic, fresh garlic right now if you'd like to. But see all that color on the bottom? And I just like to cook my onions and mushrooms just a couple of minutes. You could cook yours about five. I just do mine about two or three because I like to keep the integrity of them and have a little bite to them. Mmm, this is going to be so good. Let me show you the paste that I made. So see, this is what it looks like. It almost looks like a glue. And then when you put that in, it makes your beautiful gravy. And it's already made up ahead of, in a, ahead of time, pardon me. <laughs> and like I said, keep it right in your fridge or your freezer and you can pull a batch out. So when you make a batch, make a double or triple and then keep extra. Look at those colors on the bottom we're getting now, guys. I think I'm going to add a little oil. Just a little bit. And I want the caramelization, but I don't want it to start burning before they're cooked. So just to be on the safe side. And look at these. Oh my God. And it smells so good in here, you guys. And I'm going to add some more salt now, too. And remember, your stock has salt too, so you don't, you want to go careful with the salt. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, I'm gonna let those go for about another minute, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, here we go. I'm gonna give my stock a shake just to make sure it's all you know completely cooked or mixed. <laughs> And then I'm going to add my Worcestershire sauce in there, which is just going to be about a tablespoon or two. It's up to you. I'm just showing you over here, but I'm just going to stick it right here in the stock, make our life easier. And then just put a little in it at a time because you're deglazing the pan first. Oh my goodness. Look at that. See? See that flavor? 
And now if you have red wine, you could add that now. Or if you need more fluid, um, liquid, you could add water. So it's up to you. And I put a tablespoon, I'm gonna put about a tablespoon and a half. That's all, just a little. So simple, so easy. You guys, this is, you can't get easier than this. Now we gotta bring this to a boil. We'll put our meat back in. Let me make sure I got the pan all scraped. Mm-hmm. We'll put our meat back in. Get all those juices. Look at this, beautiful. And guys, if you did want to turn this into stroganoff, you could just add a cup of sour cream after we do the gravy and bam, you got beef stroganoff. So let's bring this to a boil and I'll be back as soon as that comes to a boil. All right, it took about four minutes for this to come to a boil. And then we just take our mixture here and just dot it in there. So I just use my fingers. Or you could just put it in there in one big clump, but it's easier to just do it like this. That way it gets all over the pan and you don't have to separate it in a big chunk. Like think of a big chunk of butter. It's easier when it's broken up. I don't know. <laughs> and make sure you get it all in there. There we go. Look at that, simple and easy. And then we're just gonna let this cook for 20 or 30 minutes. And in the meantime, I'm cleaning up my mess, which I always tell you guys to clean as you go so you have less to do at the end. And this pan cleans beautifully, you guys. You see that? Just some hot water. This takes all that off like this broth is doing and then just regular dish soap. It cleans beautifully. I love it. And uh, for years, I wanted one of these, but I didn't want to pay the price for them. But I didn't realize that they had like other brands. <laughs> I always thought of that French brand that I can barely say. La Crochet. I don't know how you pronounce it. <laughs> And my sister got me this for me for my birthday. This is a lodge. It's called a lodge. And it is the best pan I've ever used. And it goes right into the oven too, guys. All right, so let's give this uh, 20 minutes or so and I'll be right back. All right, it's been 20 minutes and you can see how much it's reduced down. So now I'm just gonna put it on simmer I checked the meat, it's pretty tender, it's perfect. I added a little bit more pepper and another cup of water because it was a little thick. And um, yeah, so, or like I said, you could add wine too. Or more broth, it doesn't matter. And um, so then I'm just gonna let that cook until the noodles are done, about 10 more minutes on simmer. And then we'll be all set to eat, guys. All right, you guys, oh my goodness, this looks so good. I added a little bit of butter, or you can use oil to your noodles just to keep them from sticking and, you know, butter for flavor, oil for flavor. And guys, use tongs when you're working with pasta. Makes it easier, I think, than trying to use a spoon and it just slips all over the place. Oh, MG, this looks so delicious. It's so thick now. That gravy, look at that, ooh. Those mushrooms, it smells amazing. Let's get a couple of nice pieces of meat to put on top. And a couple of pieces of my frozen parsley that I like to freeze so that I always have it. And look at that, it's beautiful. Is it in the picture? <laughs> there we go. All right, let me take my thumbnail and I'll be right back, guys. All right, let's go in for that first bite. Who's ready for that first bite? And you can add more gravy on yours, guys. 
I don't put a lot of gravy on mine because I don't like a lot of gravy. But, of course, if you like a lot and you want to add more, add more. And plus, for my picture, I don't want to cover everything. <laughs> so, let's see. Look at that. Mmm, 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 mmm. So yummy. So tender. The meat is just, oh my gosh, perfect. The flavors are perfect. And guys, I hope you give this a try. Stay tuned. If you're new, please subscribe if you like this video. And to all my regulars who've been subscribing to me for years and watching my videos for years, thank you so much. God bless all you guys for supporting me. My YouTube channel means so much to me. Um, yeah, so thanks guys and be blessed.